Uh, as far as management with Windows 7, it comes with PowerShell version 2. Anyone use PowerShell? One, two, yeah. kind of. Okay, so it's basically a... The command prompt was the official and old MS-DOS days. So everyone wanted a, an actual shell. And this was Microsoft an answer. It's pretty cool. It's better for administering your servers, your IIS servers, your Exchange servers, um, and remote management of systems. There are a lot of commandlets for it. And overall, this will only appeal to system admins. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. It comes standard with seven. And group policy over Windows seven, you can really do anything through group policy now. That's also with two thousand eight. With 2003, you can do it. 2008 brings a lot of uh, newer, newer policies. So is Windows 7 secure? So far, it has been. Uh, but again, it hasn't been released to the public till October 22nd. Uh, RTM is out. September patch Tuesdays, the first, the second Tuesday of every month, uh, Microsoft releases patches, which you all apply, correct? Uh, none of the vulnerabilities affecting those patches, uh, affecting that those patches patched, right? <laughs> affecting Windows 7, the full version, the, the retail version, which is good news. And who heard about the SMB version 2.0 day? Okay, so if you have, okay, you need to hear about this. If you have Windows 2008 or Microsoft Vista and you have file sharing enabled, which is port 445, you can cause a denial of service with a command. I have a Python script here that will do it. It's 10 lines of code. Denial of service, Windows 2008, if you're running Active Directory servers, most likely 445 is open. The good thing is that you don't open up those ports to the external sites, but any malicious or bad thinking employee of yours that gets a hold of the script could take down your Active Directory, your Exchange, any 2008 server. And actually, Last night, Immunity released a data execution, a remote data execution for that. So I haven't seen it yet, but it looks nasty. However, that does not affect Windows 7 full ver uh, retail version. And there's another uh, link for that. I'm going to post this later, so if you're not writing down references and want to see them, I'll post it. So a few things that are like my pet peeves that still Windows 7 has not figured out. Hide extension for no file types. So I created this file called horrible malware.txt.exe. So what is it? An executable file. It's not a text file, right? Because the last, the final extension is what the file really is. So on command prompt, you do a show directory. I put in a directory called C sucks. And horrible underscore malware.txt.exe. It's an executable file. How does Windows Explorer see it? as a text file. This is one of my pet peeves because most users will click that expecting Notepad to open. And it's not going to open. That was one. Two, auto run. This finally got fixed. And this is, always goes with the example. If you find a flash drive on the floor in a parking lot, are you going to take it home and plug it in? <laughs> Be honest. Be honest. Okay. So what happens when you plug that in on Vista or XP? The auto run shows up and if you have it configured correctly, it will run that code just from plugging it in. Windows 7 finally doesn't allow you to run anything from removable media. And here it says non-optical. So it is easier for me to distribute a bunch of CDs with malware on it less chance of you getting it and plugging into your computer, but it still works. So the top, the right screen shows an autoplay of a removable disk, notice how there's no option to run it, and the bottom screen of a DVD or a CD has run, install or run program from your media. Again, this was a huge exploit. Just curious that XPVM mm -hmm. You have to enable it to read your flash drive automatically in the VM, which uh, Virtual Player doesn't do it by default. But if you do have it, yes. And it will pop up. And since it has this whole Unity-like feel, it will it'll look like it's going to run on your, this, on your 7 machine, but it's really going to run on your, 
on your XP. So yes, you can still get XP machines if you have that configured correctly. There is a patch available for Vista and XP machines. I suggest you install this. There's the link for it. You can install this update on any Windows system. So anyone that thinks they got lucky finding an 8 gig flash drive and realizes they have just become part of my botnet. Doesn't. What about all the, all the flash drive manufacturers like Sandus? There was this all that U3 that. Mm -hmm. It won't run. Yeah. I haven't tried it. I have a U3 drive, but I formatted it, so I don't have it. I don't have the software. But um, I haven't tried it yet. I, that'd be interesting to see. It probably won't run. It probably won't run. You'll have to go in and run it yourself, you know. So, P asks about the upgrade path from um, XP or Vista. This is what it looks like, and this is official from Microsoft. I stole it from you guys. All the blue means that you have to do a clean install. And all the green means that you can do an in-place upgrade. So as you can see, you can upgrade only from Vista, not from XP. And this, you have to use the same bit version and the same version of Home or Home Premium Business and Ultimate. Doesn't look too uh, easy, right? Actually, my slides are getting caught off. I didn't even know this. Um, something to do note, if you have Windows XP, you can still buy an upgrade license for Windows 7. Correct? You can. It's still considered an upgrade, so don't go out because you have XP and buy a full version, and it'll let you install it. It'll, it'll have to be a clean install, so there are a lot of tools out there that will let you do this. In a corporate environment, I suggest you just, as you give out new laptops or as laptops get fried or whatnot, start going to 7 and deploying them straight from 7 because upgrading can take a full day. This is a chart of uh, testing for an upgrade. So if you have a super user that has over 650 gigs, hopefully you don't have too many of those, and over 40 applications, and you're doing a 32-bit install, it'll take 1,200 minutes for it to do. And this is proven to have done it. They did it. The best upgrade is from 64-bit. It does it a lot quicker. And, you know, usually best practices have always been if you're upgrading to a new operating system, do a clean install. I usually do, but if you want to upgrade, be prepared if you're a, a super user.